Hey there, internet. I'm the nice one, and today we're talking about animating and keyframing. So sit back, relax, and let me make the mistakes for you. So if you remember from my last video, once you have everything rigged up, you're ready for animating. Personally, I found having three main views is the best setup. The viewport and pose mode, the timeline, and the dope sheet. What? No, I don't mean that dope sheet. Yes, 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 that's more like it. I like to use the timeline for the auto keyframing feature, because as you change your character's pose in the viewport, Auto KF will place keyframes for each new orientation that you create. While the dope sheet is great for keeping track of where you've placed all your keyframes and for making some frame by frame changes. If you're familiar with After Effects Premiere, the Blender dope sheet will feel right as rain. Now that we've set up our viewport, I found that the best way to animate a character is by first keyframing the main movements. For example, in this clip, the big moves are falling down, landing, bouncing back, grabbing the sword, getting ready to swing, and then dashing out. This is where a storyboard comes in really handy because it'll tell you what the important movements are. Now, always remember that with character animation, there should be a sense of energy to your model. And no, I don't mean his aura or his chakra. Nani? I'm talking about kinetic energy. What I mean by this is that you don't want your character to move robotically. Kind of like when we jump. We don't just move from standing to suddenly in the air. We first bend down, gathering kinetic energy, and then we spring out. Recreating that anticipation of movement will give your character the illusion of kinetic energy. The way I do this is by creating subtle movements between each keyframe. For example, slowly bending down just a little bit further before jumping, or just pulling your sword back a little bit farther behind before swinging. These little motions between the big movements will really make your character feel believable. And if you apply this technique to each major motion, your final animation will be way more fluid. Now once you're done animating, you're all set to export and render. Some tips I can suggest is to watch your sample rate. Higher sample rates will increase the quality, but also the render time. Some ways you can get around this is by using Blender's new denoising feature. Denoising allows you to reduce the sample rate, but still generate some clear images for your final render. Also, remember to render using your GPU, especially if you have a powerful graphics card like a 1080 Ti. Some computers even let you render using both the processor and the graphics card. So make sure you're just using your hardware to the best of its ability. But once it's all said and done, boom, there you have it, your own character animation. So let me know what you thought about this series. If you'd like to see a more comprehensive video, like a step-by-step -step guide, or if you just have any questions, leave a comment below. Stay tuned because I'll be posting more time-lapse videos of all the assets that I'm making before I post a fully animated short film. Until then guys, I hope you liked the video. I'll talk to you later. Have a nice night.